Hi. I'm starting off at kind of an odd angle here, just to show you that I'm reading some Reddit comments. I have downvoted many of these comments. Comments such as, This will become a meme more than a show. The fucking Sonic movie is going to be better than this pile. Get ready for something even worse to happen to One Piece than the four kids dub. And of course, people just saying, oh no. One comment that specifically annoys me is the comment saying, absolutely no one asked for this. Because that's not true. I asked for it. <laughs> I'm interested in it. And you know what? I think a lot of people are. So this is going to be a video where I just talk again as I've done before, about how the negativity surrounding adaptations, specifically of anime, but really of nearly anything, um, is just so suffocating and lame. So the One Piece Netflix series was officially announced after, I would say, more than two years of pre-production, as far as we've known. And um, it was finally announced to... Quite a bit of backlash. Um, and to me, it's just so tired and old. I am so done with it. And I, I have a few things to say about it. So first of all, you say no one asked for this. Not only do I want it, but I think a lot of people secretly want it, even if they say they don't. I think a lot of these people who are making these quote-unquote funny comments about how bad this is going to be, are then turning right around and going to the friends, but hey, what do you what do you think, what parts of the series do you think it's going to cover? Or who do you think could, could play who, you know? Or, or uh, what kind of special effects do you think they're going to use if they don't suck or something? You know, still sprinkling ne negativity into it. But let me tell you, just getting my charger here as so I plug my laptop in, that that means you're somewhat interested. I hate to break it to you. If you're thinking about that kind of stuff, exactly why they're making this show. And I think there is a desire to render things in live action. And I think render is, is a grammatically correct word to use in that case. It can mean a few things. It's not just video games. Um, you know, I think a lot of people would probably ask, why does everything need to be in live action? Why why can't you just leave it well enough alone? I think that there is a desire. It's just a natural thing to want to see a work that is not in live action, that is, you know, a cartoon or it's drawn, rendered in that way. Uh, I think we want to see real people. I think we want to know what something would be like if real people were in it. That's point number one. I think there is a general desire for live-action adaptations that is very simple, and that is the answer to the question, why does everything have to be live-action? And I don't think everything needs to be live-action. There are some things that really cannot be adapted in a conventional way. One Piece is not one of those things. One Piece, they should give a shot. They should also give Dragon Ball another shot. They should give Shadow of the Colossus a freaking shot, as they've been trying to do for a long time. So... The next thing I have to say is that anime adaptations do have a reputation for being bad. Um, and there is a reason for that, because many of them have been bad. But I have two points to make on that. One is that this has nothing to do with Netflix. The bad Netflix adaptation has become sort of a meme. But two of the big examples that people use of that are Bleach, which was, I heard, pretty freaking good. But yeah, I hear still hear people use it as an example. And Full Metal Alchemist. And guess what? None of those, neither of those, were Netflix productions. Those were Japanese movies that were released by Netflix. Netflix had nothing to do with the creation of those. Absolutely nothing. They had nothing to do with it. They just released them just like a studio would pick up a foreign movie. Like Neon picked up Parasite, which just won Beck's Picture tonight. Congratulations to Bong Joon-ho and everyone involved in that. That's great. That's awesome. Um... That's all Netflix did. So you can't really use those as examples. Then we have something like Death Note, which, yes, huge misfire. And my explanation for that kind of stuff is that 
anime adaptations are still in their relative infancy. Uh, superhero movies have been getting made since the late 70s with Superman. Um, and there are plenty that we just don't know about. There are Captain America TV movies. There's a Doctor Strange uh, TV movie where the villain is played by Jessica Walter, the mom from Arrested Development. Uh, that was, I don't even know when that was made. That was probably like the early 80s. Um, these exist. And I guarantee you they're not very good. And that's just the phase that anime adaptations are going through right now. People are figuring it out. Video games is the exact same way. And guess what? We are starting to get good video game adaptations. Tomb Raider. Can you say it was a great movie? Not really. And I'm talking about the, the, the one from a couple years ago. But you can say it was a good Tomb Raider adaptation. That's one thing you can say. It was a Tomb Raider movie. Very much. I'm looking forward to the sequel because they got a good creative team behind that one. So let's just wait, okay? And here's a big reason why I think um, adaptations often take a bit of time to get good for a certain medium, because fans of that medium have to get into the movie business. They have to be the ones adapting these things. And, you know, like, um, I think we have one of these, you know, we know people like Guillermo del Toro, like Jordan Vogt Roberts in the business. I know there's other filmmakers that are, that are um, really into anime. I forget exactly can't name them, but I know they exist. And I think it was probably the same way with superheroes, where you first get these adaptations produced and directed by people who don't really know the source material and maybe just look at it the wrong way, even if they sort of care about the characters and story. They want to change it too much in order to work as a movie. What they don't realize is that it would work fine as a movie, even if they stuck closer to the original thing. And then I think... Um, as the people who have grown up with this stuff get older and come into the movie business, um, they then start making this stuff. And let me tell you, One Piece has been around for a long time now. <laughs> so I, I would think that the main uh, uh, showrunners, producers, writers on this project are probably big, big fans. It's probably not something people imagine. And that is such a stupid assumption. I think we need to put that aside because yes, yes, it's been clear other times when they wanted Jean Cadet Serra, the director of Alien Resurrection, to direct Akira, and he talked about how Japanese people don't tell good stories, they don't have good characters, and he was going to make all these changes to Akira. Yeah, that guy was a douchebag. We don't need to act like everyone is that guy, okay? That doesn't have to be a rule. Things are going to change, and they have been changing. We saw Ghost in the Shell get closer than people want to acknowledge <laughs> to to uh, the original. A lot of the aesthetics were there. There was the whitewashing issue. It was also present in Death Note. But in my opinion, if you ask me, Death Note had way more problems than Ghost in the Shell. Seemed to. I have not seen Ghost in the Shell. Uh, and I don't want to act like I have. Death Note I have seen. So there's also no way to know uh, if they're going to change too much from the source material until we see this thing, which we have not. Please, let's stop acting like these are all the same before they come out. Maybe just judge a thing when it happens. Stop being so freaking negative. And you know why you need to stop being negative? Is because if you start being negative before the thing even comes out, of course you're not going to freaking like it, okay? And this is... Um, I think a very real argument. This is not just like some weird blank appeal to, hey, everyone, why don't we just all be happy? You know, um, because I guarantee you there are going to be changes in this show. Of course there are going to be changes. There are some things they're going to need to change. There were changes in the One Piece anime. They put the Shanks flashback in a few episodes in. They never even showed Luffy cutting his eye which was the origin of his scar. That was not shown in the anime. Uh, they had Nami be involved in the Alveda stuff early on instead of being introduced right at the beginning of the buggy arc, okay? There were changes, and there are going to be other changes, changes that could possibly be very good. I would personally love to see them integrate some of the stuff we know about One Piece later, like, for instance, not having everyone be amazed at a 30 million berry bounty, which Oda clearly envisioned as being a pretty good bounty at the time, now bounties are in the billions of berry. 
And that was clearly just an error on Otis' part that now we can integrate it in and either has, we have Luffy's starting bounty be higher or just have him go, Ooh, 30 million, that's pretty good. And various things like that. I personally wouldn't mind other changes, um, like uh, something uh, 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 someone on the Discord I'm on suggested is having Captain Morgan be more of a, a recurring villain over the first season to have more of a through line which makes some sense. Um, so the reason that you can't be so negative before the thing happens is because you got to think about what is One Piece. And this was a really interesting example. Um, when Breath of the Wild came out, before it came out, you had so many people saying, I don't think this game's going to be good because it doesn't look like Zelda. It doesn't feel like Zelda. And you just have to think, what is Zelda? The answer is, was, a lot simpler than anyone thought, which is why Breath of the Wild ended up being so good. People realized that Zelda was not this specific gameplay structure. It was not this specific story structure where characters didn't talk. For some reason, everyone wanted the characters to talk in Zelda, yet were not okay with other big changes and other things. Um... And there were people before Breath of the Wild came out, and, and they're going to deny it. They're not around anymore who were saying, this doesn't feel like Zelda. This is not Zelda to me. No one says it anymore because we realize that that definition is big. And I think you can say the same thing for One Piece. I think there are going to be, even if they make a lot of changes, they can still distill that spirit as long as they have it, as long as they have it in there. And you can notice it as being a good adaptation of One Piece because of that. But I guarantee you, you're not going to notice it if you go in being negative. You're not going to notice something that actually is good. Okay? Um, huh. So, wrapping up here. God, I probably have a lot more to say. But uh, this video is getting pretty long and I don't want to have some weird part where I choke and then have to start over. So I'm probably going to try to wrap up instead of thinking of more stuff to say. Uh, you sound like a whole bunch of assholes. Um, I've heard this stuff so much. It's really funny how people say this stuff every time an adaptation gets announced. Like, aren't you tired of it? Um, once again, uh, about this sort of simplistic defense of don't be so negative, and then the defense you often hear of just let people have fun... That is uh, a line that I never, ever use, but I'm going to want to use it now because I'm asking, what are you getting out of this by being so negative at the start? What are you getting out of it? Just you feel superior to the people that, that have, you know, high paying TV jobs because they're working on this thing that, that you love. Maybe you secretly want to work on it a little bit, you know, because, <laughs> oh, I can do it right. I could do One Piece right, not these fools. I know that I could do it right. None of them could. Maybe they could. Maybe they would think, you know, maybe when they, maybe 10 years ago, they were thinking, oh God, I hope no one adapts One Piece because I, I, I'm telling you, I'm the one who's going to do it right. Maybe they're working on the show now and they're trying to do it right. <laughs> so I don't know what you're getting out of this. Um, I don't know how you can take pleasure again and again and again and saying, when My Hero Academia was acquired by Legendary, oh no, this is going to suck. When Attack on Titan was, I think, also uh, acquired. I don't know if acquired is the right word. But when that was also starting to be produced by Legendary, um, people complained. Even though Andy Muschietti was an amazing choice for the director of that movie. I don't know if he's doing it anymore. Um, I just don't really understand. I like to hear a good reason. <laughs> um, my final point is, this can only be good for One Piece. Um, One Piece is a strong brand. A very strong brand, so strong that the introduction most people in the United States had to One Piece was really bad. You all know it. It's the four kids dub. That was how most people in the United States were introduced to One Piece early on. And One Piece has completely recovered from that and gone miles past it. You really do not hear people talk about the four kids dub much anymore. It is a distant, distant memory. It is not what people think about when they think of One Piece anymore. One Piece has is so much bigger. Uh, it, it's only gotten bigger and bigger. Um, I remember when it was the underdog. I remember when the four kids dub. You you mentioned One Piece. People went, "Oh, that show," because they were thinking of the four kids dub. Doesn't happen anymore. So say this Netflix show is bad. 
all it would do is is just draw people towards the real One Piece. Um, and if it's good, then we just get to see this different interpretation, this 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 uh, these characters that we love and these scenes that we love brought to life. Um, and I think they could do some really cool things with it. I have some predictions on Tumblr. I'll link them in the description. Please read them if you like. And uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Um, if you have a valid worry, uh, tell me. But I, I just don't really... I can't imagine any worry that is specifically valid right now. Oda seems to be okay with them doing the, uh, this. Netflix is clearly trying to put their best foot forward on adaptations, so much so that uh, they muddled themselves up a bit and cast an Asian person as Spike Spiegel, who is probably not supposed to be Asian because they were so afraid of pissing people off. But, you know, hey, they're just trying to do the right thing. So I think we should have a little faith in them. That's it. One Piece is cool. Um, thanks to this show being announced, I'm, I'm kind of in this phase where I'm loving One Piece a little more than usual. So, um, yeah, where's, where's their Soga King over there? There he is. Thanks for watching.